Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. Everybody say I'm free I'm indeed. I'm free indeed. Yeah. In Christ, I'm free no indeed. Chains are Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our middle and high school lesson for today, um, May 16th. Good morning, good morning. I will be your teacher for today. Um, and so today we'll go ahead and get started right with the lesson. So today what we're going to be talking about in our middle and high school lesson today is the family. And what we're going to be looking at is to have um, help you guys with having a better understanding of how the church is a family. And we're also going to look at looking at how to realize that every Christian belongs to um, God's family. And so what we want to do is make sure you guys go ahead and get some paper and um, something to write with. So that way you can be able to take notes if need be. Um, and also get um, your Bible, whether it's the phone on your Bible app, on your phone or the actual physical Bible. And so what I want to start out with is what comes to mind when you guys hear the word family? Um, what does it look like for you when you're thinking about what a family is made up of? Um, and what makes up a, a good family? Um, and so 
a lot of us have a different thought and a different perception about what a family looks like. Um, some of the time it can be a positive thought. Um, and sometimes it might not be a positive thought of what an actual family looks like to you. Um, and so what we want to think about is not all of the, not all of us have a positive thought when we hear the word family. However, when we consider a good family, we usually kind of think of things that go along with um, having loving parents, um, having um, kids that are obedient and everyone sort of living together in some sort of harmony and um, unity and oneness. Um, and so what we want to look at um, is how the Bible kind of really identifies what, um, how the church is a family and kind of think about what you guys may look at and think of as what a church, um, how the church is a family. And so a question I want to ask is in what ways is the church a family? Do you consider the church a family? Um, and if we look at this, um, one might think, you know, it's a bunch of believers that look out for each other. Um, and, you know, we're holding each other accountable to some sort of level. Um, and we're all considered to be brothers and sisters who care about each other in the body of Christ. And so just to kind of get you thinking a little bit of like what a family may look like and really kind of digging a little bit deeper as to how the church identifies um, as a family. Um, and so we're going to look at three ways. Um, that the Bible kind of explores this a little bit more and deeper about the church um, as a family. And we're also going to kind of look at it as um, how it may be seen and viewed as a spiritual family um, versus our physical family. Um, and so one of the ways that we're going to look at it and cover first is we have the same father. And so if we're looking at it in that aspect, what we're looking at and what that means is that we are all under the same head. Um, in essence, we all have the same name in Christ and we all share the same father, which is God. And so we learned in, in our early in life that God is love. And if God is love, he is all powerful he is the creator of the universe. And if we keep this in mind, it should, um, it should not be hard to know that he is also our father. He's our dad. And if we're looking at it in that sense of we all have the same father, we all are brothers and sisters, and God is considered our father. God is considered our dad. Um, and this is seen as, as to be a very good thing. And so if we kind of just dig a little bit deeper and kind of explore like what that means and what that kind of understands for God being our father, let's go to Mark chapter 14. And we're gonna look at verses 32 through 42. And it reads, and they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little further, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed saying the same words. And again, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to answer him. And he came, to the, he came the third time and said to them, 
Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And so if we look at this passage and look at these, it says Jesus prays and calls God Abba. And Abba is the Aramaic word for daddy. And so this was an unusual way to pray in a unique, excuse me, a unique way of addressing God. But if we also look at other scriptures, Paul also uses the word twice, once in Romans 8.15, and again in Galatians 4, 6. And so we're referring to God as Father, Abba Father. What, if we're thinking and looking at it this way, do you think it was disrespectful for, to call God your daddy? Think about what it means for someone to be their daddy. If we're looking at what it means for someone to be considered someone's daddy, it kind of conveys a different meaning than father. And the term daddy, the term daddy, excuse me, seems to be considered much more intimate. And it shows that we can have a loving relationship with our father. And so in this aspect, daddy was seen as more of an intimate, more relational, loving type of relationship. And if we think about this, this is what God exactly wants us to understand, that he is God, he is also our daddy, and he loves each and every one of us dearly. Our daddy is always there for us. He chooses us. And as we begin to understand our role in the family, we must always look at our relationship with our father first. And so let's go and take it to another scripture and look at Ephesians. And in this one, we're gonna look at Ephesians chapter one, verse 18 through 23. And it says, Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. In the heavenly places, far above, all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So in this passage, God appointed Jesus to have in the church family as head over everything. He oversaw everything. And if we look at this, what does it mean for us to be under the head of Christ? So if you're looking at this and seeing that God is the head, and he's our father, he's head over everything, and we are his children, and we are under him, that means that Jesus is our guide, he's our leader, he's our king, he is above everything and over all. And think about that, if you're looking at this as a father or as a dad, he's kind of seen, a dad is seen as the head of the household, the head over everything, um, and he's the one that oversees everything. And in this passage, it's, it's important to understand, to know that it's important for us to allow our king to lead in our, and to guide us. We're not held together by 
similar things that we have and similar things that we do and similar trends, but we're held together by Jesus, who was the head. He is the head and is connected. We are all connected to him. And it means that if we're connected to him, that that means you and I are connected to each other. So we help each other. We are connected to each other to being able to fulfill the family and to work together. So now we're going to look at the second example, and that's we are joined by marriage. And another way that we can look at this is to understand our identity as family is to look at the language of marriage provided by the Bible. And so we're going to look at, we're going to look at Ephesians still, but in this one, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter five, verses 25 through 27. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. And so in this, they kind of used the metaphor for for the church in these two passages as referred to the body, or excuse me, the bride of Christ. And so when we hear the bride of Christ and we look at this in relation to that, we're looking and seeing the bride as, as us. We are considered the bride of the church. And if we continue to keep thinking about this, the term bride relates to us as members of the church family. It refers to the family ties that exist between each other. As we commit ourselves to Jesus, we find that we can commit to one another. And we are the bride, the one who Jesus chases and loves. And so that's how we can see ourselves as we are joined by marriage because each of us are considered the bride to God as to having that one-on-one -on -one relationship as part of that family and us being able to connect to Jesus, to God. And then the third one that we're gonna look at is we belong to the household of God. And with this one, we see the church as a family is that we are all brothers and sisters in God's household. And so now we're looking at it as our relationship within each other as brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. And so this time we're going to look at Matthew. We're going to look at Matthew chapter <clears throat> excuse me, Matthew chapter 12. And we're going to look at verses 48 through 50. So Matthew chapter 12, verses 48 through 50. And it says, but he replied to the man who told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. And so let's look at this. Let's look at families and let's think about the family. And you can think about your family in general. What are some of the benefits to being part of a family? Let's think about this. We all can see some benefits to our family. It might be, you don't have to do things and be alone. You can have and share common interests with each other. Joys, share common joys, shared common goals. There's somebody there with you. 
at some point, at all times. It's not just you by yourself. But on the flip side, what may be some of the difficulties in being part of a family? And so some people may sit there and say, there's good times and there's bad times experiencing with being in a family. And sometimes if you have siblings, you may even say, I have to put up with some annoying people, annoying people that have annoying personalities. Some of you that have siblings and you guys are close in age, you may think that that can be considered as a negative or a difficulty. And that's okay. That can be seen as that. And that's okay because in all families, there's things that are good and there's things that are bad. And if we're able to take anything in looking at all of this, when you're with a family, we all have different personalities in the body of Christ. And if you look at our spiritual family, there's things that people may do that you don't like. There may be things that you may not necessarily agree with or like, but being in any family, whether it's a physical family or a spiritual family, being able to always, always be willing to help each other out, to be there for each other, to help each other in bad times, to support each other, and to hold each other accountable is really what being in a family is about. And being in a church family, being in a spiritual family, being in a physical family, there may be things that are good that things that are positive, that are happy, and then there may be things that are bad, but overall, always being there for each other and helping each other and loving each other and realizing that even in a church family, we're not always gonna see eye to eye. We're not always gonna agree, but putting God first and allowing God to be the head, to be the sole person on top, helps us to be able to get along, helps us to be able to love our family, to be able to love our brothers and sisters in Christ, whether it's our spiritual family or it's our physical family. And what I want to help tie all of this in, if we think about this, often the things that cause the most tension within a family are the little things. It's not the big things. It's those little things that, that just seem to get underneath our skin and just seem to just cause the most tension. But when we begin to understand each other better, we can develop a deeper spiritual relationship. We can develop deeper spiritual relations with each other. Then we can begin to love each other better. That's really what it's all about. Being able to understand each other better, love each other better, hold each other accountable and putting God first. I'm making sure that God is the head. He is the head. He's Abba. He's our father. He's our daddy. He loves us despite our faults. He loves us despite the things that we say, that we do, the many mistakes. And when we can see God as our father, as our daddy, loving us, caring for us, helping us, understanding what he's all about and how he wants us as brothers and sisters in Christ to work together. And I want to leave you with one thing for some food for thought. If you're thinking about your physical family or a spiritual family, whichever, leaving you with this thought. What are some specific ways you can become a better brother or sister to those in either your physical family or your spiritual family? There's always things that we can look at and, and think about more. I know for myself, having a brother and a sister, what can I do on my part, what can I do to hold myself more accountable to be a better brother or sister to those in my family? 
my physical or my spiritual. And so as we prepare to close, being able to think about that and meditate on that later of what is it in your physical family that you can do differently? Whatever that is and figuring that out. Thank you for spending this time with me this morning. Um, we are going to go ahead and close out in prayer. And I pray that you guys have a blessed week and we'll see you next week. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us to come to the, the today and be able to hear this word, Lord. We just ask that you just continue to let it resonate and meditate in our hearts and our minds and our spirits, Lord, that we can be able to take a, a look into our own selves, each individual, Lord, to figure out what we can do to, to be better brothers and sisters in Christ with our physical family, as well as with our spiritual family, Lord, and being able to know how to lean and look and depend and look towards you, Lord, as the head, as our father, Lord, and how you can be that father that we need, Lord. And even for those that may not even have a father, Lord, that they can be able to seek you and to be able to know that you can be that father for them, Lord. And we just pray and thank you for being able to come together today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you guys and have a blessed week. See you next week.